Heavenly Father, our God, our King, our Lord, and our Savior. Heavenly Father, just uh, grab our attention right now, Lord, in a way that, um, that benefits us, Lord. Um, we know that nothing is a benefit to you because you lack nothing. But we are the ones that are lacking the benefit, the blessing this morning. So, Lord, we offer to you this morning our complete attention. And where we lack it, Lord, we ask you to uh, do whatever you want, whatever it takes, Lord, to grab it. Uh, Lord, whatever it takes, we want to be in your directive will this morning. It, nothing is worth experiencing without you, Lord. We can, we can accomplish a lot of things in this world, but if we don't have you as our motivator, your word reminds us that without love, it's not worth doing. So, Lord, just continue to show us your love. Continue to uh, have your spirit uh, teach us how to identify your love. And when it comes to giving, Lord, let us be givers, not just takers. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the most valuable thing that have changes, that has changed our lives or can change our lives, and that is your spirit. The blood that that flowed through your body, the life that was given for ours. We thank you, Lord, for being who you are, being a man that was disciplined, purpose-driven, and very focused, Lord. Mastered by nothing, but very, very focused on doing your will here on earth. Help us this morning to be that way, Lord to do your will, seek your will, and be purpose-driven all day today. We thank you, Lord, for this class that teaches us that we also needed to be bought with that price that you have given us, which is your life, your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for these words and this moment, and we honor you with this prayer, and we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Praise of Jesus. Amen. All right. Um, redemption. Uh, we've talked about the act of redemption. Um, we use that verse, 8, John 8, 31 to 36. And that's where we're at right now. Um, John 8, uh, starting in 34. Um, where it says the, the person that commits sin is a ser servant to sin. Um, if we bend down to doing something wrong, it's not because we didn't know better. It's not because we didn't know better. How many people know what you need to stop today? No, you know it specifically. Sinning is too broad of a statement. You know? Yeah. You, you need to examine yourself. If you haven't done it today, you already messed up. You already know what you need to work on. Why are you acting like you don't need to work on it? That's part of your problem. Uh, Jesus is never going to hold you accountable for something that you are not already familiar with. As a child of God, now you have access to all kinds of information. How many people know that you got, you got from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock to get on your knees and pray? That's just an idiomatic expression. I don't expect you guys to do that. Get on your knees. You don't have to get on your knees. Wouldn't, wouldn't hurt. I mean, it should hurt if you don't get on your knees. But uh, you got a lot of... How many people got some reasons to pray for. The Bible says the righteous mm -hmm. prayers of a man availeth much. In other words, the, the plan for some of the animosity or the problems that you have right now are for you to communicate that to God and live in that plan to resolve some of those issues. You yourself. Righteous means the plan that God has for you. The purpose. 
You know, you have a problem. It's your problem, personal. And Jesus already did everything he needed to do on the cross of Calvary. Now you have to play your part. Now you have to do your part. Righteous means doing what you're supposed to be doing in the midst of that issue. You know, when we're talking about the righteous, the righteous man, when you have a problem, when you have an issue, what are you supposed to do? Take it up with God. Take it up to God. And then when you, when you talk to God, obviously you're going to see your part in it. Because he's the revelator. The Holy Spirit reveals what you can do. Even being still is part of God's plan. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. You know? Some, some of you guys got to know that you're here for a purpose, a reason. If it was worth it, if somebody said, hey, go to C Street, I'll give you $10 million when you get out. You would, you would see the purpose in it, right? Well, guess what? There's, there's riches within this whole program. But it's up to you to seek it. You can spend a whole year in the program and not get nothing out of it. But who's the one with the negative attitude? Yeah. If you go to prison for two years, aren't you supposed to learn something from it? Even the, even the heathens do that. Even the heathens, why do you think they put you all that time? Yeah. I remember having a guy here that spent 20 years in prison, 20 plus years in prison. And then when he got out, he copped an attitude. <laughs> in other words, doesn't matter how much time you put in, you're still going to get out being human. Human beings cop attitudes. That's why this is very important, because you need to know it. You need to remind yourself of it. You need to remind yourself that the same problem that existed in the presence of Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago, is the same problem that you have right now at C Street. And Jesus already did everything he needs to do. He accomplished it. He said, it is finished. And he, it wasn't finished at this time. Because it says here, starting in verse 31, it says that Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. Students. Students. Yeah. You're not saved. None of these people were saved at that time. Why weren't they saved at that time? He had to sacrifice. Yeah, he had to finish his work. If you look at it from a, a, a chronological standpoint, Jesus was speaking right on target. And then he says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He's already speaking into the heart of the issue. The heart of the issue is um, they're in denial. They're living in denial. They're living in denial. How many people know that there's a verse in the Bible that says, Out of the mouth the heart speaks. Amen. And listen to what they say. They answered him, we are Abraham's seed. And we are never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Sound familiar when Nicodemus was sitting there talking to Jesus and Jesus said, you have to be born again? He didn't get it either. How many people are looking at this saying, I don't get it either? Maybe because there's some iniquity in your life that you haven't brought to the Lord and in sincerity and truth, you, you haven't done what you need to do. I'm just saying that. Everybody's got to check their own closet. You got to know that we are all the same Amen. here, equal. Yeah. All needing the Lord, the Holy Spirit to guide us. Amen. That's what's going to keep this group cohesive. If you think you're better than anybody, you got an issue. A huge issue. You ain't going to get this. If, you're, if you haven't figured that the guy who does a lot 
the guy that does a lot here, that does whoever the group is, is probably the greatest example of Jesus Christ. I'm not saying it's by your works you got you got saved, but Jesus Christ did a lot. He didn't waste any darn time. He didn't waste any time. What you guys learned yesterday from last night's um, uh, movie? Can anybody give me three things that you learned last night? Vitamin C, vitamin E. Vitamin C. What Mega about doses. Omega, omega. Antiviral. Magnesium. Zinc and There you go. And antitoxin gets to the liver. And mega tissue. doses of vitamins. Yeah, high doses. A thousand milligrams per meal. Oh, okay, mega doses. Now, now, does it matter about price? Uh, they call it cheap. Cheap. Yeah, it he recommends the cheaper. Yeah. More of the cheaper. Yeah, it actually is. It's, it's yeah. acidic. It's what is it? For okay. Okay. Dollar a day just for yeah. stomach medicine. Then folic acid. Folic acid. folic acid. Isn't it folic yeah. acid? No, it's ascorbic. It's, okay, how do you spell that? Ascorbic. Okay, you can Google that. Yes. You can actually make this. And also aspartic acid. Yeah. That's the better one. Isn't yes, the dog. Uh, is, how do you spell that? A S. P-A-R. A-S-P-A-R. T-I-C. Yes, that's part of it. So you can Google these and you can actually learn how to make them. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rhino. Rhino. <laughs> Rhino. <laughs> Rhino. <laughs> 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 Yeah. You definitely do not want to do a teaspoon of that. That'll put you on the bus. Yeah. 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 We'll take two. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'll, you think I'll you watch. Will. You'll be on a pot pill six o'clock tonight. But his website is doctoryourself.com. He has a lot of information. Yeah. Hey, give up some of your porn time <laughs> to get through this, okay? I'm not gonna it's, it's it's I'm hey, information. Important. Knowledge is power. Amen. We're called to test all things, but you know, I like the guy because he says he's really not pushing the, the, the brands or anything like that. Yeah. He's yeah. not motivated by money. Guy, I've, I've heard it before. Yeah. Um, food matters. This guy's an awesome resource. Um, what else did you learn yesterday? Um, um, it says don't eat junk food, avoid sugar. Avoid uh, sugar. Wait. Avoid. avoid How do you spell avoid? A B O I D O I D. Avoid what? Sugar. Sugar. And lots of unprocessed food. And junk food. Junk food. Why do you think that's important? Because it's a crap -o. Why do you think? Bad for your body. Huh? Bad for your body. Yeah, it's got a lot of preservatives, lots colors, sugar. Uh, a lot of oils. Yeah, it locks you up. Okay. It's all negative stuff that cause problems in your digestive system. Inflammation. Yeah, yeah. Inflammatory issues yeah. are signs of an autoimmune disease yeah. kicking in. Kicking. The body is fighting. It's, it swells yeah. up. Yeah. It's giving you a signal, okay, oh, that man. there's an issue. <laughs> okay? If you're fluffy today, oh, might not be a good idea to... <laughs> Be eating. And what's the one thing that a drug addict craves when they're detoxing? Sure, food. Food, any kind of food. How, how many people want bread? Sugar. That's it turns, it converts into sugar. Unless you burn it. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. It's like rice, potatoes, very high in the glycemic index. You can get a hundred pound bag of sugar outside the body, and if it's labeled hundred percent fat free, it's one hundred percent true. And gluten free too. But the minute you start consuming that sugar. Doors. Yeah, boom, it kicks into fat because the body, that's what the body does. That's the process mm -hmm. in nature. All your chemicals, the enzymes, and the protein, you don't, 
You know, you're not like Teniente. Teniente, you guys know Teniente, right? Lord. That guy is a go, 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 go. He can eat all kinds of food and he'll burn it out. He'll burn it out. You know, he'll exhaust it. But we're in that right now. You guys aren't in that season. So you guys got to understand your intake has to be lessened. Well, they can be, but they choose not to. Yeah. You can be a lot more, you can be a lot more active by stretching. Stretching is probably one of the greatest things you can do. Stretching. You know, releasing those, 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 what is it called? Um, th these chemicals out of your joints. You know, you're stretching your muscles is really, really, it's actually a lot better than doing the exercise itself. You know, the, the tearing and, and the extending and extending of the muscle. And the rebuilding it. Yeah. Vitamin C also uh, prevents stones and dissolves the ones that you have. So that's yeah. a win-win for stones. So it's vitamin C is very, very important. Very important in your diet. What is a natural producer of vitamin C? Yeah, that's it. Huh? There's all kinds of uh, vegetables that are natural producers. Look it up real quick, me. Natural producers of vitamin C. And it's not just oranges. You guys are, you know, that's just somebody who, who promoted that orange is green. As a matter of fact, is it better to drink orange juice or to eat an orange? Eat it. Why? Because you masticate and digest it. Yeah, your, your body is meant to do that. Look, guys, you guys gave a whole box of that stuff I out the stuff for up. free, man. You guys are giving away the vitamin C. You can make soups in it and get better vitamin C. Look, papaya, cantaloupe, and strawberries. We have a whole other box of it. Yeah, you should make a soup full of that stuff. I took a bunch of that stuff, man. You know? That stuff is great. You cut it up. I'm going to have some soup today. My wife is going to cut it up in little squares and, you know, with bone broth. Yeah, or, or whatever, whatever you guys got yeah, here, man. Paleo. Yeah, yeah, man. Good. You can actually check this out. Put them in in a grill and grill them. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily over. do it, but you know, you can actually gr grill them on the on the on the grill. Oh, oh, good. Good. Papaya. When we get papaya, cantaloupe, strawberries, go ahead right here. Click this twenty foods that are high in vitamin C. I don't know what that is. Kakadu. Kakadu. It looks awesome, though. What's that, Robert? You can go this way. Yeah. Thank you for that. Everybody can just tag on Ken. Go down, go down, watch. Cherries? Cherries? Go down. Rose hips? Rosie's hips? No, I don't know who Rosie is. Chili peppers? No, we don't need none of them here. Okay. Yeah. Chili peppers? Hey, guavas? Hey, sweet yellow peppers? Black currants? I don't know what that is. Thyme? We got a lot of thyme. Yeah, we got a lot of thyme. Thyme is that, it's that stuff that you guys got out there. Yeah, you can add it in your stuff, man. Your food. You can make tea out of it instead of drinking soda. Oh, parsley. Parsley, guys, you guys have a bunch of it. You guys are giving this stuff. Cilantro, we're blessing the people. Yeah, mustard, spinach. We're having Brussels sprouts. Kale, you guys are giving this stuff away. Jesus, let them have it. Yes. <laughs> Kiwis? Hey, that way when you go over there and we bring it over here, see, guys, look, James 417. Go to know, do right, do not do it, for then there is sin. The reason that, that, that we're doing this is to get you guys to realize the golden nuggets that are placed in front of you. 
You know? I mean, sure, a bag is good, you know, but but you're not always going to have the resources for that kind of stuff. You got to be able to say, hey, you know what, I want that, and you need to make a conscious decision. You know why you're, you know why? What's the purpose of being here? Is to educate you, to get you to stop eating like everybody else is eating, and eat in a way that that has a benefit to you. The reason you don't, you guys pass it up is because you think it doesn't apply to you. Guess what? It does apply to you. A good life skill. You've been missing all this all your life. You came here to learn about Jesus. Jesus is going to show you. He's the creator of all things. These are the secrets uh, that you need to know. You need to see what you couldn't see before. There's no reason why brother goes to the market. You know, and hangs out with Pastor Jay. You know, you go to the stores, and I'm not kidding. You don't see nothing of of of, of food out there, but you see all the vitamins, and you see all the vegetables, <laughs> just sitting there, all pretty and and nobody's touching. You know. All right, what's what's another thing that we found out? So avoid sugar. That's very important. Always. Avoid sugar. I am not saying do nothing for you. Why do they seek to prevent and reverse viral diseases? Yeah. And, and is the virus itself bad? No. It's no. pneumonia. It's the pneumonia. And then, and then depending on what, what issues you got, it's what complicates it. That's why some people, you know, have it and they're not really suffering that much. But it's the ones that, that, that have the complication, they'll suffer. There are a lot of people that Right now, we're, we're fortunate, guys. I'm trying to educate you. Hey, how about this one? Nobody's brought it up. What's up with a mask? It really doesn't do nothing. Really doesn't do nothing. It's an airborne. Yeah. It's so small. It protects you from getting in. It's so small. But what is it for? A mask. What is it for? If you have it, they said it well. What is it more? Hey, let me tell you. What is it more? Huh? Well, how do you spell cycle? P S Y C H L. It's in your head. It makes people feel like you're you're giving them courtesy. And at a certain point, you really are because if you sneeze, you don't have to worry about you know. It, it, it's a social thing. I have to go out. Take a line, kind of. Social. It's like saying good morning at a social distance. Why six feet, guys? Did he mention that? Uh, Why six feet? Well, he also said it's better to stay 10 feet away. A range of a sneeze or a cough is yeah. longer than six. Yeah, it's more like the 10 air. feet circumference yeah. everywhere. If yeah. someone doesn't yeah. cover it, it spreads yeah. 10 feet like a circular. Yeah. In circles. That's a lot. That's, That's a lot. How powerful your sneeze is. Yeah. <laughs> there was a guy that walked around with it. He made a, a cardboard thing. He would slip in the center of it and he put straps on it. And it was circular and it was six oh, feet. No. So wherever he walked, yeah, people not, had to not, stay not, away from him. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. But it, what it does is it, he would he, he looked like he was wearing a one of those tutus. Yeah. So he like walked around and he made that shower and walked around in the Halloween party. Well, it did. Uh, so so what do you guys think about about a sneeze guard at a, at a store? I think it's a great idea. Well, it's good. I think it should be mandatory. What, for the clerks? It should be mandatory even without this. Yeah. Bank tellers have it for security reasons. But we need to we need to do that. Why? Because you know it's just a good idea in general. Just in general. What happens when you use antibiotics? You feel the resistance to yeah. You do. You introduce more antibiotics in your in your your, your, your body. I, mean, I don't ever put antibiotics on me if I don't need to. Very rarely do I put the hand soap. I cut myself the other day uh, extending my hand over at Chipotle because they have that there. And I went like this, and the darn thing <laughs> wasn't even on. So I was like, well, what am I doing that for? Is that going to help me? You think that's going to help? Not at all. you got to wash it off. you got to get rid of it. You know? So you you got mask is is a psychological thing. It's good. It's, 
It's for social um, respect, awareness. Yes. So if you're washing it off, is it contaminating the water now? No. No? No. Okay. Uh, it, it, it probably is to a certain point, but it, at a certain point it dissolves and it does nothing to us. Why? Because the drainage system is not anywhere where we can access it. Yeah. You know, it actually concentrates it and by the time I mean, it ends up... I mean, are we sending it to the ocean? Yeah, we are. Eventually, but I don't think it's going to be a problem at that point. It probably is. You know, you're, when you go to the bathroom, you know, you probably do that. It, is it a bad thing that you get it? Not necessarily. It's normal. It's normal. You just have to learn the a the cherries, the kale, the spinach that you can actually the body. God made the body uh, well enough to heal itself. It just it can't be the enemy. That's the good stuff, isn't it? And the reason that we're so used to candy bars and sodas and chips and all that stuff is because they want to sell something and we want to buy it. You think you lack something because you're not part of the purchasing system. If you had a check today, you would your attitude would change. But that's got to change. Because we're studying a class called redemption. And God redeemed you from the greatest problem that you ever had. And didn't even if you sit there and your go-to thing is, this sucks, then you ain't identifying yourself as a child of God. And that ain't a 100% thing. That's not a 100% thing. It's not. Because there could be a legitimate reason why you think things suck. Because God says, hey, this is meant for you to be a part of the solution, not part of the problem. You know, God puts you in a situation where you need to be a part of the solution. So, hey, if your go-to thing is, uh, this ain't fair, I need this and I need that, and uh, this ain't right, and this is boring, then then you're like them because if your answer in a situation is not identifying yourself as a person that needs to be driven by the purpose of God, then you're not looking at your relationship with God. That's not your go-to thing. Your go-to thing has to say, Heavenly Father, what, if, what do you want me to see here? How do you want me to process this? Hey, we sing that song. Ken is a person that believes that when you sing a song, you need to really understand it's a prayer mm -hmm. to God. I believe that too. But greater is the act of obedience than any other words that come out. Hey, it's, it's don't make my words be just words. Be, 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 be like the kettle on top of a stove when it whistles it's because something's going on inside. You know, there's a reaction that's causing that. You know, and, and we need to understand that when we see we are Abraham's seed and we are never in bondage, hey, God's putting you in a situation and it's a temptation, but I strongly recommend there's no temptation that is not common to man that God has not already given you the way of escape. Let's go there. Let's go there. You heard it if you were paying attention from our brother. Let's open up our Bibles to that. Because if you're not doing this, then you have no saliva in this situation. You don't have any saliva. What page? First Corinthians. Read it. Um, mm -hmm. Read it, Steve. 
No temptation has overtaken you but such as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide a way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. Amen. Amen. So God, God, God's character doesn't allow us to miss the whole point of whatever you're dealing with, not only physically, but even more so spiritually, because God is omniscient. Mm -hmm. He's all-knowing. He's not only working on the outside, he's working on the inside much more. As a matter of fact, I think that the reason that he allows us to be on the outside dealing with things is because the problem is on the inside. Because out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the mouth, the heart speaks. You can tell me that Jesus is your Lord, but I think that as human beings, the only way we can know is by the outward. Because we're, we're not called to know what a person's thinking. You know, I can look at jo Josiah cleaning his nails, but I don't know if he's praying. You can clean your nails and pray. <clears throat> but I don't know. You know, Josiah ain't going to turn around and say, hey, don't you know what I'm doing? <laughs> he would never fault me for getting mad at you because you're picking your nails instead of opening your Bible and looking at it, you're right. If he says, hey, if he says that within the temptation, he gives you the way of escape, that would assume, presuppose that he knew already ahead of time and he, he, he put that way of escape as an option for you. Whether externally or internally, he set you up for success. He knew it before the foundations of the world. Within the temptation. So if he says within the temptation, he's giving you the way of escape. What does that presuppose of the temptation itself? Is temptation itself a sin? Think about it. If within the temptation, he gives you the way of escape, what does that mean about the temptation? Something that you should not do, that you should uh, remove yourself from. Not, to, uh, not be in its grasp. So in some cases, the temptation itself is not the issue. It's how you respond to it that's the issue. Crack, there's nothing wrong with crack, guys. There's nothing wrong with crack. There's nothing wrong with marijuana. There's nothing wrong with uh, a porn disc. There's nothing wrong with that stuff, but you engaging it and using it for the purpose of the person that, that, that made it, created it, or laid it out there for you. In other words, the enemy put it out there for you to use it. But if you ignore it, if you deny it, its value to you, if you, if you do not react to it and engage it for the purpose of that person, how many people know the only reason that they make porn is for people to use it? They don't do it as a public service. Okay? They don't sit there and do it for a public. They do it for what? Yeah. The reason that Hershey's chocolate, the re reason that Doritos are made is for what? Money. Money. So would it, would it be wrong for them to spend a lot of money to make it taste better than anything you've ever tasted? To get scientists to create a, a, a level of sodium that you won't get sick of and you'll want more and more and more and more? Would it be wrong for them to put excitotoxins in there? In other words, something that stimulates your mind and makes you want, you want it more and more and more and more? No, because they're there to make money. They're there to create a loyal customer. They're there, they're there to do exactly what the drug dealer is doing, but legally. 
the drug dealer is no different than the government or the the people like Frito Lay. How many people know that Frito Lay is owned by a chemical company? Because if you put Frito Lay on a on a list and you get all those products, they're gonna they're gonna you can't make Frito Lay or Doritos. You can't make Doritos without chemicals. How many people know it takes a smart person to make Doritos? It takes a, it takes a very very unique person. Not a dummy can't do it. it takes, who? I remember working at Clara West. Clara West, the company that makes shampoos and uh, color dyes and makeup. And makeup. We didn't, I, I didn't work at the makeup facility. I worked at the place on Flynn Road. And um, man, some of those guys, when they were putting the chemicals together, it was crazy. You know, it was really crazy to see them how they mix things and how many bags and stuff like that. But the same owner of Clara West, Bristol Myers, is a medicine company. Bristol Myers is a medicine company. Pharmaceutical. Pharmaceutical company. Yeah. Chemical company. Make shampoos that you put on your body. And ultimately, they're in food now. Jesus, look at Jesus' answer. Jesus answered them and said, Truly, truly, Armain, Armain. Why do you think he, he always said that? Why do you think he always said that? Yeah, truly, truly. Because he's asserting his authority as God. Okay, there's an idea behind this. It's called the true witness. How many witnesses would you need to, to make a claim? You would need two or more. And he doesn't wait for them to agree. He's his own witness. I would strongly suggest the Trinitarian position. You have the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit here. You have the Son speaking and he, he says everything that he heard the Father say. In other words, it's unity. They were one in the plan of salvation. This was planned even before the foundation of the world. Jesus, he... He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Philippians chapter 2. I'm stretching it a little bit. But the idea is that they understood. He understood that these things were necessary. Let your will be done, not mine. When he said... The Father and I are one. He's not talking about the oneness position. If you understand in the book of John, the context is salvation. What are they one in? In salvation. And here he says, Verily, verily, does the Father say it? Does Isaiah say it? Does Jeremiah say? Because when you're quoting a prophet, you essentially are quoting the one the prophet is quoting. Okay? That's what you do. You know, he's a rabbi. He's talking to students. If there's a student there and he's a rabbi, that's the context. He says, 
He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you. He's making a God claim here. I say to you, Whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. If you're committing the act of God, if you're doing something of God, then he's lording over you. You know, you have to inventory yourself. Is it your purpose? Or is the person in front of you benefiting on a spiritual level? Because if you're the only one benefiting, that's not, that's not what I'm talking about. Jesus didn't come to do the will, his own will. He came to Father. do the will of who? The Father. the Father. He even said it himself. He said, who is my mother and who is my, my, my brother? Who's the family? The one who does the will of the Father. Remember when he was 14 years old and they were looking for him? And they were all upset. Why were they upset? Because he was... He was out about doing the will of his father. And where was he? he? Yeah, he was in his father's house. There's a oneness in Jesus' purpose. And since I'm a Trinitarian and I'm a dispensationalist, I understand this. When he says, I say unto you, that's a, that's a God claim there. Why? Because it's a teacher they're disciples. And he says, whoever committed sin is a servant of sin. So what is sin? You're, yeah, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. At the basic level of definition, it's that you're missing the whole point. You're missing the whole point. You're not doing what you're supposed to It's like somebody, somebody saying to you, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. When, you, when somebody comes to you and says, dude, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. He's, he's literally saying you're sinning. Why? Because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Now, if that person did not know that you were supposed to be doing this, then you would turn around and say, hey, wait a moment. I was told by such and such person to do this. Then you would explain to them, hey, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing here. And if they say, oh, okay, I get it. I didn't know, then that corrects your situation and you stay doing it. You don't stop doing it. But if that person is not, he doesn't know what you're telling him. And then later on, what's he doing? He's checking to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed, that you have the authority to do that. That's why when Jesus said, in his name, in his name, in the name of Jesus, what you're saying is Jesus is Lord over you. No, not the Roman government. Because that's what Jesus was doing. He was going against the authority of that day. Even to a Jew, if they submitted to the Roman government, that was sin for them. And that's what these guys are doing. But they're claiming Abraham's promise because they're not recognizing the one that's in front of them. But they're failing to see the person in front of them. But they know it works. Is it human to miss and not be able to see what's in front of you? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm done. That's what I'm trying to teach you guys. That's why Ken went out and brought the vitamin C because it's not something complicated. It's simple. That's why we're showing the internet options of something natural. So you guys don't mug can for his vitamin C. Why? Because there's a greater benefit. There's a greater benefit for eating fruits. We can enjoy them. You can have them all the time. And you can know that there's a biological, physical purpose for you chewing them. Enjoying them instead of ignoring them. And it's beneficial for you. Wash them. You should always wash fruit. Even if it says wash, you should always wash fruit and vegetables. Why? Because that stuff, the virus can stay on the fruits. Yeah. 
you can transfer that over thousands of miles. Jesus answered them and said, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. And the servant slave abide not in the house forever. But the son abideth forever. I love that. And a servant slave abideth not in the house forever. In other words, he's fulfilling the whole idea of redemption here, guys. He's explaining to them what the whole point is. He's saying, you're a carburetor. We're, we're in a garage right now. And you're an engine that needs an oil change. And because you're a mechanic, he's making it very practical. He's trying to make it very practical for the audience there. Why? Because they're, they're Jews. Who's he talking to? He's talking to Jews. He's not talking to Americans. We need to understand this today. We need to understand that Jesus came for a reason. Why? Because we needed a Savior. And if you need a Savior, who else do you know needs a Savior? Yeah, it should be your family. Your family. Forget everybody else. Hey, look. Look. For one second, please. Forget everybody else. Think about your kids. Think about your, your family. Think about the, your mother, your father. Think about all those people that don't like you right now. But you love them. In all honesty, you love them. How about this? In all honesty, you hate them. Don't matter. God's got you covered because he's, he's, he's telling you to love your enemy. In other words, there's a way to make your enemy somebody that not your enemy anymore. I'd rather see the enemy on his, on his feet. I mean on his knees saying, I didn't know that you were giving me something I needed. I'd rather have him look at me. I don't need any more enemies. I love that. I saw that in a movie one time. I saw that in a movie. The guy would 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 get to a point with people, and the people were like looking at him like, man, I hate you, but I can't fight against you. And he would say, look, I don't need any more enemies. I need even friends. So you, you either got to work with me or not. And then it ain't going to be good with you. You got to get to a point where where you uh, you get, people say sick and tired of being sick and tired. <clears throat> Is there a purpose for you to beat your head on the concrete all the time? No. Oh, not really. Because the the whole process of, of of insanity is to keep doing it over and over and over again. I mean, you don't even need enemies. You can be in a room all by yourself and beat yourself up pretty darn good. You know, you don't even have to leave the room. You don't have to get out of bed. You beat yourself up where? In the air. So, so it's got to change, guys, because God didn't purpose you to do that. Freedom is right here. That's what Jesus is saying. Freedom is right here, guys. Freedom is right here. Because Jesus was the person that they weren't willing to accept. Who else said... Father Abraham. Oh, Lazarus. Yeah. Or the rich man. The rich man. The rich man. Not, n not Lazarus, the rich man. The rich man. With no name. He said, Father Abraham. So what does that mean? That he was a Jew. Because a non a Gentile would never ever say Father Abraham. No. Wouldn't have known. So it's a way of you knowing in the parable that's a Jew. And all you got to go to is the laws in the Levitic, Levitical code where it starts to talk about the slave-master relationship. And you understand that the reason that those Jews left Egypt with a lot of stuff is because they did what God told them to do. You mean the Egyptians? No. Well... The God's people. God's people were told by Moses, hey, go ask the Egyptians for stuff. And they would give it to you. And they went and said, could I have a gold bar of bullet? And, and they were more than willing to give it to you. Here, 
take it, take it, get out of my life, get away. And they would take it. Back then, it's, it's always been doing the word of God. Doesn't matter who you are. You could have been an Egyptian, and an Egyptian could have gone to another Egyptian and said, hey, give it to me. Why? Because those people that left were, the, were God's people. Those people that went through the ocean were God's people because God's people have always been doers of his word. Okay, it's always been grace in the beginning and it's always going to be grace forever. You understand? Nor Jew nor Gentile. God didn't pick you specifically because of your good works. So, so, Look, he's talking to Jews. If I don't sit here and tell you this, you're not going to understand what's going on here. If I was talking about mechanics, if I was talking about painting, if I was talking about uh, OME, uh, the, the, the program, what's that computer program that we use? OBS. OBS. Yeah. It would, it would, if I was talking about something that's dear to you, you would understand what I'm talking about. God's saying, hey, look. These guys should have learned, should have listened. But what happened? They identified themselves with the community, the society of that day. And they missed it. Mm -hmm. They missed what was going on. He was speaking to them. And, and he says to them, look, you guys are slaves to the society. You're a slave to your culture. You're a slave to your tradition. You're a slave to your coping mechanism. Because none of that was with me in mind. None of that. When Jesus made this statement to the Jews of his day, they didn't like it. When somebody tells you the truth, sometimes you don't like it. And here's what I'm saying. Whenever somebody tells you something that they assume is true, and if it is true, don't automatically react like it's Kaka. Learn to love the truth. Learn to love the truth, even if yeah, even even if it's rough. I was say, you know, if, if people out there on the street they go, and it can, and he's a pink elephant. Yeah, yeah, I know he's a pink elephant. Doesn't even affect me. I mean, I know I'm not a pink elephant. Yeah. I'm not a soap bubble. I'm not whatever. But when they come up and say, man, I can't. I do not. I'm, 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 I'm under control. What are you talking? Ah. Uh, because now they're dealing with something that is reality. I'm not saying I have to react that way, but the defense mechanism come up because I'm now we're dealing with something that's legitimate that I possibly might have a problem with. Then who are you to tell me I'm drinking too much? Yeah, anyway, yeah. I get it. Whenever you say, I've got it under control, that's the problem. That you got it under control and God does it. Yeah. When, when, you, when you drink what God wants you to drink, when you eat what God wants you to eat, when you are doing the will of the Father, then that's when you're part of the family. Apart from that, you're not part of His family. You're part of, you're reflecting the other Lord of your life, who's not really your Lord. Because you were redeemed, and once you were redeemed, you, never, you were never meant to go do it again. What slave, what slave goes back to the evil master? We do. Somebody who's twisted in their thinking. Yeah. So Jesus made that statement to the Jews today, and they didn't like it. They said, hey, I've got it under control. They said, I'm Abraham's seed. You identify yourself with a human being. That's the symbolic representation. If you identify yourself with a human being, just a human being, not Jesus was not just a human being. He is God's son. He is God. He is God. And when does God stop being God? Never. Yeah. So if God has these attributes, when does he let you go? When does somebody come? When does a stronger man come? into the house. There's no such thing as a stronger man. When we use the term omnipotent, that means that he is the strongest one. 
You can't have anything even equal to him. That's why he says, I am the Father and the Holy Spirit, one like me. You're one. He doesn't partner himself up with any human being. He always attributes it exactly how he should. When, he, when one of the disciples say, you are the Son of God, hey, the Father has revealed this to you. He always goes back to his trio, which is God. Within the one being that is God, there exist these three persons that are co-equal and co-eternal. There's never any fluxation in their character. In the eternity past, which they existed in, when Jesus said, give me back the glory that I once had with you, that's what he's talking about. It never changes. You can flip this box on any side and it doesn't lose its shape. It's, it's, it's in beautiful harmony. And let me tell you, hey, there is no greater... There, and, and when you do talk about somebody who's equal, it's God within himself. They're co-equal and co-eternal. Is your problem that big? No. It may be to you, but you need to look at it from his perspective. Go ahead, Kenny. You were going to say something. No, I, I mean, this is the beauty. God never stopped. The Son never stopped being Christ, the Son, even though he was in the form of a man and had emptied himself because he made a predeterminate promise within the Godhead that he would not use his power. And therefore, he kept his promise. And even though he prayed and sweat blood over the fact that he was going to face something that no man inside of Christ will ever have to face because he took care of him and paid a debt for us, what he went through was far beyond thorns and, and nails and anything we'll ever have to understand. Because he said, I'm not afraid of it. Don't fear of that. Mm -hmm. But what I'm going to go through, whew, it made him sweat blood. And he kept that promise because God cannot lie. And that's what I'm getting at. God cannot lie. Mm -hmm. And Jesus never stopped being God. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't lie. And so he had to submit to the will of the Father because he promised in time before and eternity that he was going to go through this for us. And he didn't want to, but he had to because he can't lie. And so every promise he ever has made to us, guess what? If he was willing to submit to the cross, and the cross went beyond the physical, every promise he's made to us, he can't lie to me. It's his nature. The Bible says he will he not deny has himself. to keep his promises to us because it's his nature. And yeah. that's what we go back to the cross and recognize what he went through for us. And he didn't want to because it was terrible, but he went through mm -hmm. another comprehension. Mm -hmm. But he can't lie. Mm -hmm. Never stop being God or something. And all his promises are just as good as what he wants to cross. We're so devoted to people that break their promise 90% of the time. We're so devoted to people that break. As a matter of fact, we're more devoted, check this out, to our enemies than we are to the one who never lies to us. Mm -hmm. But his promises are too good to be true. Yeah. Well, they're, they're but they're true. Yeah. <laughs> In other words, you, you're here to you're here to you're here to not be result oriented, guys. That's the best human analogy that I can come up with. Don't be result. Hey, it doesn't have to be this way, but it is. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Yeah, you got to you got to position yourself in His directive will and get yours. Get yours, because you're here to, to build each other up in the admonition of the Lord. You Right now, this is a season to be strengthened by the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. To live in that truth. You weren't meant to be perfect. You didn't pick your mom and dad. You got to figure out how to make this thing work for you and everybody else. So God gets the honor and the glory. Because that's true happiness. True happiness is in, in, in that relationship with God. Amen? Amen. Um, so it says uh, their response was, was, was a lie. Why? Because they were being motivated by the father of all lies. They said, and we were, we were never in bondage to any man. 
When you sit there and, and sit there and say, I'm not addicted, I can leave it or take it. That's just like saying um, that you don't want to leave it. Because God says that's not part of your life anymore. Leave, leave it alone. Hey, why do you think uh, Balaam would sat there and said, well, later on, you guys haven't gotten to there. There's a point where he says, may I die the life, the death of a righteous man. We'll get to that point soon. May I die a death of a righteous man. You guys are saying that you want change. But don't be like Balaam. That's a quote that Balaam says. I'll bring it to you guys up in the Sunday. It says, may I die a death of a righteous man. You say that you want change, but are you a part of that change? Because if you're not, I would strongly suggest that you need to control what you can control. And that's you. Don't sit there and try to make sense of the economy right now. When, hey, it doesn't matter what the economy does. If you're not ready for that job, why, why go out there and get one? If you're going to lose it in two, three months because you're going to screw it up, because you're going to go back under pressure. How are you under pressure? How are you under pressure? Are you, hey, most guys have a crap. Why? Because the minute that they get a job, Who's, who's the first one or the second one that wants a piece of it? If you got kids. No. No, for the kids. If you have kids, who's the, who's the second entity, governmental ent entity? Child support. Child support. You get mad. Well, then what am I working for? Huh. A dead man change, man. But to go on to the next dimension. You don't stop existing because you die. Dying doesn't solve the issue. It just moves you on to the next stage. Amen? Amen. Remember, they were under the Sabbath uh, commandments. And they had to keep them holy. Then there was already seven. There was 1,400 rules in rabbinic uh, uh Resources that would condition people like that. How they how they can avoid that? They missed it. Why? Because they weren't trying to listen to Jesus when Jesus said that I'm Lord of the Sabbath. Lord, yeah. That means that means that should mean a lot to us. Enjoy. Lord of the Sabbath. What does it mean, Lord of the Sabbath? First of all, he's a Jew, so he's monotheistic. When he says Lord of the Sabbath, he's talking about being God of the Sabbath. Period. End of discussion. Remember, he's a Jew. And he was a Jew. He was a really, really the best. He was the true Jew. You know? He was the epitome. And he said, Lord of the Sabbath. Where do we have that in the book of Mark? Well, choose the book of Mark. Because it's the best one to go to. So, but Jesus didn't address those issues of bondage. Why? Because he wasn't here to throw it in their face. He was here to fulfill the law. That's why he said he was Lord of Sabbath. And then he followed it up by saying that, hey, I'm here with them. They don't be sad when I'm here with them. There, there, there'll be a time for that. Because I'm not going to be with them. But Jesus didn't. What did he do? He got right to the point. He said, whosoever committed sin is a slave of sin. And that's what they were. They were slaves of sin. If Jesus freed you, then whatever the solution is, has to be ordained by him. It can't be ordained by your old coping habits. And not in the name of Carlos. It's got to be in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen? That's why even being still, knowing that he is God, the whole knowing yeah. is the fact that you're doing it under his uh, standard. Amen? Amen? Under the spirit of God. <clears throat> All right, let's stop here. They're slaves to sin? I'm just first page.
Yeah. First with the word of prayer. And yeah. Fidencio, can you pray us out, please? Yeah. Father, we thank you for this uh, time we're able thank to gather you, this uh, weather and this change and uh, the virus that's going on, Lord. I pray that you continue to keep us um, healthy and uh, that we do our um, necessary